Hi guys, I'm Fonte Davis, the youth director here at Waukegan Community Church. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, share, subscribe. You can do all that below. Fonte Davis, the youth director here at Waukegan Community Church. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, share, subscribe. You can do all that.
guys. I'm Fonte Davis, the youth director here at Waukegan Community Church. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, share, subscribe. You can do all that below. One more time, see you. I'm Fonte Davis, the youth director here at Waukegan Community Church. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, share, subscribe. You can do all that below.
Waukegan Community Church would like to thank all those who have served our country through military service. We thank you for your dedication, commitment, and sacrifice. Hello, welcome to Waukegan Community Church. We're so glad to have you a part of our worship service this morning and as you worship God in your living room, it is just our pleasure and our honor to have you as our guests. Today, we want to do three things. We want to reflect, we want to rejoice, and we want to release. First, we want to just reflect on our loved ones who um, God has blessed us with, and uh, we're just so grateful for many of you who sent names in of people and pictures and so that we can remember these individuals. So we just want to reflect on those, on, on the memory, the great memories, and we want to hold on to those. But also we want to be, uh, get into the word today because we want to rejoice in the scripture. What does God has to say for us? And we're going to talk today about his inescapable love. And at a time like that, this, we need to focus on God's love. And then we want to finally just release those loved ones back into the hand of God Almighty. But thank you for being with us. And again, we're at Mount Olivet Cemetery in Zion, Illinois, uh, to say farewell to our loved ones and to those who know Christ. And if we know Christ, there's going to be a reunion. And so we're looking forward. So sit back and and enjoy our worship and we thank you and we love you.
is a gift, and we appreciate that gift that God gives to everyone. And sometimes it's difficult to say goodbye. But for the individual that have a relationship with Christ, it's not really a goodbye. It's really more of a wakening up because they are going to the very presence of God. So at this time, we would just like to commit all of our loved ones, our brothers, our sisters, our grandmothers, our parents, we would just like to commit them back into the hands of the Father and our Creator, God. But I want to pray for you, and I want to pray for the families now as we commit each individual back into the presence of God. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for the gift of life that you have given. We thank you for our loved ones. We thank you for how they have made an impact on our lives. We are better because of them. And so, God, we just want to commit them back to you today. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. Brown, friend of Carolyn Berno, Beatrice Short, mother of Nate Short, Curtis McKay, cousin of Pastor Ovalton, Flora Joseph, mother of Dolores Clark, Lucille Myers, grandmother and mother of Fonte and Renee Davis, Anna Carroll, grandmother of Natalie Biggs, Leon Fryson, brother of Joyce Smith, Ann Walker, aunt of Earlene Wallace, Michelle Abernathy, friend of Carolyn Burno, Linda Harper, sister of Reginald Walls, Linda Lou Savory, mother of Tamara, Amaris, and Alexis, Ms. Polly West, mother of Annie Teasley, Dorothy Ayers, aunt of Pastor Obleton, Larcy Allison, aunt of Robin Kirkland, Leroy Davis, uncle of Jeffrey French, Donald Carter Jr., father of Crystal Staten, Bernice Darden, grandmother of Tabitha Patrick, Theotis Knox Jr., friend of George Singleton, Santos Ivalia Galindo, aunt of Mario Flores, Linda French, cousin of Jeff French, Dana Blaylock, stepfather of Brandon Ewing, Charles Woods, cousin of Julie Bell, Diana Smackle, aunt of Tanita White, Albert Thompson, uncle of Judah Haley, Cameron Bradshaw DeSalt, relative of Latoya Barnes, Panola Davis, great aunt of Linda Reed, Ochi P. Gallagher, friend of Linda Reed, Jeremiah Davis Jr., cousin of Linda Reed, Bernice Williams, friend of Andrea Mayfield, Regina Kasiki, friend of Michelle Davis, Ebony Harwell, friend of Michelle Davis, Ruby Talber, friend of J.K. French, Ruby Lee Super, cousin of Armand Moore. Barbara Jean Holmes, aunt of Armand Moore. Kenneth Christman, friend of Dwayne Bell. Calvin Munaline, cousin of Dwayne Bell. 
Harold McAllister, uncle of Vicki Myers. Linda Poog, mother of Monique Goddess Hills. So you want to hold on to that. And so as we release these butterflies in just a moment, I want you to think about your loved ones, each one of them. Matter of fact, you can call them by name and remember them and remember the impression on your life. Thank you, God, for the memories of our loved ones, and we thank you, God, for our life is better because of them, and, and uh, we thank you for them, God, and we uh, thank you, God, for these memories, and, and we just rejoice in them, God, and we reflect on them, and we thank you for each memory together that we have had with them. We thank you, and we love you.
his keep Light in the darkness, my God That is who you are Sink in your shade Waymaker, miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness, my God That is who you are
miracle worker, promise keeper. That's who you are. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Because in the presence of the Lord, there's also his promises. And the one thing that we need today, we need to experience, we need to hold on to, we need to wrap our lives around, is the promises of God. The Bible makes it very clear. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saint. Precious, precious. Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Our loved one who died in Christ are now in the very presence of God Almighty. Well, you said, well, what are they doing? Well, Revelation 21 tells us that he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no longer any death, no longer any mourning or crying or pain. According to Revelation, they are in that no more zone. No more cancer, no more COVID, no more hospital, no more treatment. They are in the very presence of God. And you need to hold on to that promise. But also there's some promises for you as you think about your loved one gone. You need to realize that God promised us that he loves us with an everlasting love. He still loves you. He also said, I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. I'm not going to desert you. I'm not going to abandon you. He also said in another place, I will not forget you. Isaiah 49 Verse 16, he said, Behold, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. God says, you know, I love you. I won't forget you. i never leave you. And God said, you are continually on my mind. You can rejoice. You can rejoice right in your living room right now. Rejoice because God said that I am with you. I will not leave you and that you are still important to me. And if God is for us, who can be against us? God is with us, and God want to walk us through this storm. I want to look at one passage of Scripture, Psalms 139, verses 7 through 12. And I want to just think a little bit about God's inescapable love. His inescapable love. I think that's what David is writing about. Uh, 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 and, and as he addressed this, he must be writing an audience that is experiencing loneliness and feeling abandoned and, and all alone. And he says this in this powerful passage and, and just the five verses. And the first verse he asks the question in verse 8 and 9, he gives an, an answer. Listen to what he says. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? He said, if I descend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, it's not the word there, but it's implied you are there. If I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, you are there. What is he saying? David identified four of the most impossible situations to be. He said, if I'm up in the air, 25,000 feet in the air. He said, God is up there. He over the world. If I go to Sheol, the underworld, the, the afterworld, he said, God is there. If I go out on the, out on the, the if I go out on the dawn, that is the outermost world, he said, God, you are there. If I go to the bottom of the world. And in that day, the bottom of the world was considered the bottom of the sea. He said, God, you are there. In other words, she said, God, your unscapable love is wherever I go. Now watch this. It's very powerful. That word presence in the Hebrew, it means the face of God. So wherever we go, the face of God is there. Whatever situation we're in, the face of God is there. And you need to take comfort in that, that wherever you find yourself, the presence of God is there as well of all of his promises. What are some of his promises? He'll love us. 
his mercy, his grace, compassion, long-suffering, goodness. God is there. Now, now, let me say this. Let's be honest. Death sometimes is a strange place. It's a strange place. Jacob was in a strange place once in Genesis 28, 16, on a journey in a strange place, left home in a strange place. Listen to what he says. He went to sleep and he woke up and Jacob woke up during the night and told himself, he was talking to himself. You know why sometimes we talk to ourselves at night. He woke up and said, surely the Lord is in this place and I never knew it. What he said is that in that strange place, he realized, although he was feeling strange, but the presence of God was there. I want to encourage you. You might be in a strange place, but the presence of God is with you. And, 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 and you know what's good about the presence, of, the, the presence of God being with you, the face of God being with you? It means God protection, his care, his provision, his support is with you as well. You know, I'm so excited about the Word of God that I can just, I can just shout. Won't we just pause for, what, right, for one minute in your living room? Just give God some praise. Just praise Him right now. Because if we're going to move forward, we need to worship God. Just worship Him uh, right now. Take a moment. Just worship Him in your sanctuary that God is with us, that, that God will always be with us, and that along with God's presence is that His love is with us to minister and to motivate us. Amen. Amen. We got to worship. Very important in this time of our life. But the writer goes on to say a couple more things. I just want to underscore real quickly. Look at verse 10 and verse 11 and 12. Uh, some other things that he wants to do. Uh, and, and you know what's incredible about this text is that it's almost like uh, in the first three verses, uh, he's everywhere. But all of a sudden in verse 10, God decides, he said, I want to get close to you. You know what? As we draw near to God, God will draw near to us. I'm going to encourage you right now. And thinking about those who are gone on and you feel lost and empty, you need to draw close to God because God wants to draw close to you and God will give you the strength that you need. In verse 10, it seems as if God draws so close that according to verse 10, listen to what it says. It says, even there, your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay, lay hold of me. Your right hand will lay hold of me. God is saying that as you go into a difficult time, God want to take our hand, not just to be with us, with his inescapable love. But God want to be with us, and he want to take our hand. And, and in the original, the ideal there is that all of a sudden, because of our knee, it seems like it means God literally turned his face in our direction and give us undivided attention to validate us and to accept us and take our hand and lead us on to where God would have us to be. I'm reminded of my grandson, Jelani, um, we was having a discussion one day, and he was sharing some things that was scary, that he was afraid of, a scary situation, and he was just sharing it and going on and on and on and on, and then he finally stopped, and he said, are you listening to me? And what he was saying, I want you to stop, turn, look at me, Give me your undivided, affirm me and validate me and take my hand so I can move forward. God is saying right here, God is saying, God is listening. God is hearing us. God is there. God has our attention and God want to help us to move forward. Something else in this verses of scriptures that is very important. Verse 11 and 12. He started talking about darkness, this thing called darkness. He said, he said and even, he, he, he kind of identified death with darkness. There's a similarity. He said, if I said, surely the darkness will overwhelm me, the light around me will be night. He said, death is a dark place and it's overwhelming. I think about Psalms 23 that says, as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it's a dark place. 
It's a lonely place. It's all around you. You're in a place where this darkness is overwhelming. But in verse 12, God said that I want to dispel, and I can dispel the darkness that you're feeling in your heart. God has that power. He said, I'm with you. I love you. He said, but what I want to do, I want to take your hand. I want to lead you, and I want to direct you. And I am able to dispel the darkness in your life. Isn't God a powerful and awesome God? You can praise him right now. Praise him right now in your living room. Just stand up and praise God. God, inescapable love, God's mercy, God's grace. God said, I want to take your hand. I want to lead you. I want to direct you. And I can dispel the darkness. You know, we serve a God who can bring about a daybreak experience in the midnight hour. A God who said that you may, your weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. A God who's able to flood our soul with his presence that's overwhelming. And God said, that's what I want to do for you today. I want you to experience my inescapable love. I want you to experience my presence. I want to walk with you. I want to talk with you. I want to lead you. I want to minister to you. I want to bring some joy in your life in spite of what is going on. And you know, if we want to experience all of God, we need to worship him at this time, rejoicing those loved ones and what they did in our life and what they meant to us, but we also need to worship him. But there's something else we need to do, and I'm going to close with that. God said, I'm going to take your hand. It's very important at this time that you need to take God's hand. God said, I want to walk with you, but you need to take God's hand, and you need to walk with him, and you need to talk with him, and you need to listen to him because he's the one and the only one who's able to give you encouragement and hope and purpose and meaning as you cling to his promises. And as you do that, you'll be able to move forward. Of all the fears that grip our hearts, no fear is greater than the fear of death. There are those who will tell you that death is a natural part of life. But if death is just a part of life, then why does it cause us such anger and sorrow? When God created humanity, he intended for us to grow more and more beautiful over time. But in one tragic moment, we unleashed sin into the world, and everything broke, including our bodies. Death is the ultimate consequence of sin, and it fills God's heart with anger and sorrow even more than it does ours, because death was not a part of God's original plan. The Bible says that when Jesus approached the tomb of his friend Lazarus, he quaked with rage, and his eyes filled with tears. He was overwhelmed by the suffering caused by death, a curse we had brought upon ourselves. Death's curse was physical. Both the world and our bodies were decaying. But death's curse was also spiritual, eternally separating humanity from their creator, the source of all light, love, and life. But because of God's amazing love, he chose to surrender all power and glory to rescue us from death. Jesus, God's only son, was expelled from the presence of the Father and thrust into complete darkness in our place. He took humanity's curse upon himself, breaking death's grip on us and purchasing humanity a place at the Father's side forever. A day is coming when the true king will return at last to restore the world to its full glory and us with it, renewing both soul and body. 
You'll still be yourself, but even more so. You'll finally be the real you. On that day, we'll look at each other and say, I always knew you could be like this. I saw glimpses of the real you, flashes of it, and now here you are. Our future is not an ethereal, impersonal one. You're not going to float through the clouds. You're going to walk. You're going to eat. You're going to laugh. You're going to hug. You're going to sing in realms and degrees of power and joy that you cannot now imagine. Some will tell you not to fear death because it's part of life. But Jesus says not to fear death because it's been defeated. And the day will come when Jesus embraces you with his nail-scarred hands and says, Welcome home. I have so much to show you. If anyone tells you not to fear death because it's a, it's a part of life, they say, don't fear death. Death is just a part of life. But Jesus says not to fear because he has defeated death. Your loved ones who are gone and they, they knew Christ in a personal way, they're right now in the presence of God Almighty. But if you hope to see them again, you need to make a decision for Christ. You need to invite him into your life. He has defeated death. I want to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you. Repeat after me in the, your living room. Father, I thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you that he died on the cross for all my sins. I don't de deserve him, but I invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart right now and to save me. If you praise that prayer, I want you to let us know. Just give us a, a, information right on the screen there. Let us know. We want to we wanna encourage you but if you prayed that prayer and you invited Christ into your life, there's going to be a reunion one day. And you're going to be reunited with your family in heaven. Amen.
These are challenging times, but it's really in these challenging times that we need ministry even more than ever. So we're asking you right now to give. Uh, there's a number of ways that you can give. You can give via the website and our web page at, um, and give via securegive.com, or you can mail a check to the church. Uh, WCC has always been known to have some incredible givers, and it's at this time where we really need you the most that we really want you to give. We need to support the ministry so that the ministry can continue to support all those other people who are in there. 